Welcome back everyone, it's who's 57 here. We are back on Neverwinter on the Xbox One, and today I have the third part of the Sharndar daily quest tutorial. So this will be all the quests through the Moonlit Gate, which uh, unfortunately that's the last area of Sharndar, and uh, in order to unlock it, you actually need the key for it. So you have to go through the process of reinforcing all the protective wards, and then you go through the process of unlock the realm of Malabog, which gives you the Moonlit Gate key. Once you have that, you can come to this area. Again, like I did for the previous two areas of Sharndar, I have saved up the quests that you get. Uh, basically, you get three per day, and I've saved up all the quests so that I can go ahead and do them at one time, just to show you how to do it. I do have one quest that I made progress in a different area that I can go I ahead and turn in because all it was was collecting was Cyclops eyes so we'll go ahead and get that out of the way and get started with the other quest for this area so the bad thing is it's kinda of spread out you have to pick which ones that you're gonna go for in this case we're gonna go for the patching things up quest get that out of the way first as well as the mouths to feed quest which is where you have to recover these little edible mushrooms uh, sometimes they can be rather annoying because they're heavily guarded i am on my level 70 control wizard so uh, it's definitely easier to do these quests with a dps class than a support class uh, and I'm also doing the video as a live stream, so anybody watching live will be happy to answer your questions. Now, for this particular quest, what we need is we need to collect vital sap, and you can either get it as a drop or you can find these little stills and do it that way. I prefer to find the stills because it's a guaranteed way to get the sap as if just getting it as a drop is not a guarantee. So go through, once you have the sap, you'll find these little dryad trees, which you can use the sap on the tree in order to heal it, and basically that's what you have to do for the quest. Also, we're going to be picking up the mushrooms along the way, and since we have this still right here, go ahead and clear out the enemies at the still, and I think he might have dropped a vital sap. Yep, he did. Um, so there's, you know, a prime example showing you, you can get it from a drop, but I actually now have four vital sap, so I don't really need any more of the vital sap. I just need to go ahead and find the trees, and we'll do that now. Also picking up the Fey Dark Crystals, which are for your daily quest that rewards you with the Fey Wild Spark. So make sure you pick that up every day. Uh, random rank 5 enchantment that's worth picking up need one more dryad tree which hey look at that this one isn't guarded by any enemies that's what I like to see there we go that's done gonna go ahead and collect this mushroom here and then we're going to head down this path which is for the quest the big bad and ugly um, it's a pretty easy quest. It just requires you to kill Fremorian warriors. Uh, they're not exactly the easiest thing to kill, so do keep that in mind. Uh, they do a lot of damage, and depending on what class you're playing on, they can be rather annoying. So the first one's right here. They're normally pretty heavily guarded, uh, or at least have a lot of mobs with them. Also, they are immune to control powers. Keep that in mind. Uh, so if you are like a wizard in this case. Unfortunately, I cannot freeze it. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is you want to kill these witherers as fast as possible before they have a chance to actually heal the Fremorian warriors or any of the other enemies because them healing is just a complete ridiculous thing. And they will strip your HP pretty quickly, so that's why I'm actually using shield at the moment just to make this fight easier and so that I use less uh, health potions. Now before we go to find another Fremorian warrior, I'll use a couple health potions. 
And there should be another one right down here, but he's not respawned, so I'll just go ahead and take the mushroom. It also depends on what time during the day you're trying to do these dailies, as when you get a lot of people trying to do the dailies at the same time, sometimes the enemies will not have had a chance to respawn, and that can make it a little bit longer and more difficult in order to actually complete the quest. This is probably one of the longer quests for this area, though. Definitely goes easier if you have some people helping you kill them. There's another guy over here killing this. And sadly, this Fremorian warrior is not alive. So we'll just go check down around here. Take another mushroom, because I'm at 7 of 10, so this will be 8 of 10. There's normally a warrior there, as you can see he just popped up to say hello. Kind of upset though that I woke him up, so he wants to kill me. Well, to be honest, they always want to kill you, but nothing new there. Take him down as fast as possible, and that completes that quest. And don't mind if I do take those health potions. And of course we have the Release the Fey Wild Energy quest. That's the daily one that you get every day. Um, so that's the one that's naturally going to be the one that is tracked since that's completed. But uh, we're not going to go back there and turn that one in just yet. I'm looking for one more mushroom. And uh, we'll actually get those on the way back to the turn-in area. Which we have to go back that way anyways to start working on the next quest. But uh, just showing you this area. Unfortunately, the mushrooms are the annoying thing. Uh, finding all of them, they sometimes like to hide them on you. And, of course, they like to guard them all the time. So, I'm going to have to kill these enemies before I can actually get back on my mount. And now we're going to follow the gold sparkly line back. Because it's going to take us right past the turn-in area. And this way we can go ahead and go to the next set of quests for this area. You definitely, definitely want to have a decent mount when you're doing this area. The area of Sharndar is just so spread out with so many enemies in it, and they will actually aggro on you and follow you for quite a ways. So having a 110 mount is definitely recommended. Uh, it's not required, but definitely recommended. You will see me come back to this set of doors here that tower of Seldarine later that will be the final quest that we do for this area uh, i do apologize if i missed a quest because uh unfortunately sometimes it will not give you all of the quests but if i did miss one feel free to send me a message and i'll make sure that i go ahead and get that picked up for you and i'll do another video on that quest just leave me a comment all right so we'll turn in those quests, I still have a couple more to do, you'll see in the journal, which I actually have to go ahead and select the one that I want, which will be Calm and Assertive. And that one's down this side. Uh, it's pretty easy to do because it's just three spots that you have to interact with. And if you know where the spots are, it's incredibly fast to do. If you don't know where the spots are, then it can be a bit of a problem. But you know, once you see the video, you should have no problem doing it. If you do have a 140 mount, it makes this even easier, but sadly those are only legendary and, well, they can be a bit expensive for just a movement speed bonus. So you're looking for these little caves, and of course you'll see the little sparkling area. Uh, that's the spot that you have to interact with in order to actually place the hound bait. You'll notice that we have a portal hound that comes out and if I can get rid of that potion, there we go, interact with the portal hound. So that's one spot. Now in order to avoid as many enemies as possible, just hug that hill right there, and you can come to this spot right here. Um, now you'll notice if there is anyone else near you that you're doing the quest with or they're doing the quest, it doesn't matter who summons the portal hound as long as you interact with the portal hound it will count for your quest like you've seen there so that's something to keep in mind uh, i'm going to try to not aggro those enemies come up and around here 
and then just take these guys down and this will be the third spot now if the little area is not sparkling for you to interact with don't worry about it they do respawn pretty quickly and there's also more than three areas so you should have no problem getting the quest done as you can see that quest is done we should have one more maybe two more for this area actually yeah we do have two more for this area so I will be doing, let me find it here real quick so I can actually track it. Well, I have the war makers. Uh, that's one. So we'll go ahead and go back. Uh, since the war makers quest is actually one of the longer quests for this area, it takes you into like a little mini dungeon basically. But it's definitely one of the easier quests in the fact that you don't have to run anywhere for it you literally just go right in the door that's located next to the area that you pick up the quest from so the only thing we have to do is run back this long path why they made it so long i'm not entirely sure but they did i guess just to give you a chance to look at the scenery and yeah whatever not interested just interested in the quest so go back, turn this one in. I'll have two more quests. So we'll do War Makers, which is right through that portal, literally behind where you pick up the quest. Uh, this quest can be a little bit long if you are soloing it, especially depending on your class because of the amount of enemies that are here. But it really shouldn't be bad if you're a decent DPS class. If you're a support class, like a Guardian Fighter or a Cleric, even to some degree a Paladin, you really will want to run this with uh, somebody else with you. Now, you can run through and do your best not to aggro every single enemy. That will make your life easier. And you can also interact with those barrels uh, even while you have enemies aggroed on you. So that's a really nice thing uh, that you don't have to wait for the enemies to uh, die before you can interact with those little barrels. Makes the quest easier. But we're dealing with a ton of witherers in this area, so of course you want to make sure that you kill them before anything else. And again, we have another barrel to deal with. Kind of amusing to light the barrel and watch it send the little red caps flying. They're not that hard to kill unless you're a support class. Um, you can pull groups together. I usually don't like to do that because of the amount of witherers that are located in this area. If you pull all the groups together, then you have the witherers always standing in the back and just healing the other enemies that you're trying to fight and kill. So I tend to avoid doing that as much as possible. Like you can see here, all these little witherers just chilling there. And of course now we have the Cyclopses to deal with, which those guys, they hit pretty hard, so this can be an area that takes you a second to fight through. I definitely want to make sure that this Witherer is dead. He dies pretty quickly though. And now I'll turn my attention back to the Storm Shaman. Now that he's out of the picture, I'll take that free rank 5 enchantment. Always remember to definitely go through and pick up your loot. And now we have three catapults that we have to destroy. Of course, being a DPS class, it's relatively easy to destroy them. And then all we have to do is deal with the few remaining enemies. If you hug the left side, you can usually get past that first group of withers without aggroing them. Come to the second catapult and you want to prioritize the catapult because you'll still have enemies continue to spawn if you do not destroy that catapult. So we'll go through, kill those. As you can see, there's another batch that spawn and kill them pretty quickly. And of course, I got some witherers chilling in the back there, like always. They're literally just healing each other, which is okay because they're not healing the other enemies and I can kill them really quickly. Actually, almost any class can kill those witherers really quickly. They have very low HP. This will be the final catapult that we have to destroy. There we go. 
one little group of enemies, and I'll take that free healing potion. Now, there is a chest here, which for me, I never bother with, but I'll open it up and just show you. So I got a rank 5. I actually got a couple profession resources and some silver out of it. Not bad, which if you're just playing by yourself, definitely go ahead and take the chest. But if you're playing with a team, I find it's not worth the time to take the chest because it's relatively easy to gold farm if you need gold or gold to buy anything with. And it's pretty easy to farm for the rank 5 enchantments. So we'll go ahead and turn back in that War Maker's quest. Which I actually have the item in my inventory. Or I should at least. Um, actually no, I do not. So I did miss one quest because it didn't give it to me. Uh, which if you guys do need a tutorial on that, just let me know. But uh, it is the quest where you have to take arms and uh, basically give swords to elves that are trapped in the little man-eating plants. It's up that direction. Uh, it's a very easy quest to do, but uh, it just did not give me that quest leading up to doing this video. So th for the last quest, we'll go ahead and go through the Tower of Seldarin. Get that free daily key and come in here. Now, this tower can be rather annoying if uh, you're going through it by yourself. So that's why most people actually go through it with a team. Sometimes you can get decent rewards from it. It is possible to pull a portal hound or a, a blink hound out of here. But it's rather annoying for the process that you have to go through to do it. And so far, I've actually never been able to pull one. So I would not recommend that you buy keys in order to do this, but if you have your free daily key and you have the time to run it, it's definitely worth at least trying to pull a reward from it. You also do get the silver, cre or uh, not silver, but gold crescents from this uh, at the end at least. And then you do get usually some kind of unbound uh, thaumaturgic stone or lesser thaumaturgic stone. And just make sure that you pull all the enemies into one group, especially if you're a DPS class. Uh, since I'm a wizard, everything's AoE. It makes it a little bit easier to do. And hey, look, the potion that I used, they gave me a free one, so why not? Uh, no point in killing that group of enemies, nothing there, it just takes longer. And then we'll be going across the room to the other side. This is where, if you're doing this with another player, it's extremely helpful because you can literally divide and conquer, have one person go to each side. I'm just going to avoid that Cyclops' attack because I don't want to waste the healing potions. And I can take him down pretty quickly, so kill the other Witherer done. Now we go back to the center area. And all the debris goes away and you can actually go up here. And that brings us to the second level of the tower. Basically the same as the first. Um, pretty easy. Uh, these little wolves, fey hounds, they can be annoying. Uh, we're actually going to pull a couple groups together here. Might not be the best thing to do, depending on your class, but uh, as long as you're comfortable with your play style and you know exactly how much you can handle when you pull a group, big group like this, you'll be fine. Uh, if you're playing like a great weapon fighter or a Scourge Warlock at a decent item level, you can pull an even larger group together. Or of course, if you're running with a tank, you can pretty much pull the entire instance. I know I did have a couple people ask me to do a video pulling the pretty much entire instance uh, in the Dread Ring, so I'll be doing that a little bit later on. But basically, uh, this level, you've got to work your way to this door here, and it's not too hard to do, but there are a lot of withers around, so you do want to try and kill them first, of course, before they have a chance to heal anything. And there's still a thorn alive. Ah, oh, he died now. Good. Now there's the last guy.
Like I mentioned earlier, I am doing this as a live stream, so anybody that has any questions, I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Uh, chat's been pretty quiet, though. And to the next level. Actually, I think I left a rank 5 down there. Darn it. Again, we can pull pretty much at least a couple of these groups together. I'll fight here at the Fey Hounds. I don't like uh, the enemies that take my action points. And then go back for these little healing bastards. Just use these guys to get some of my action points back for the next fight. And work on pulling that last group that's actually guarding the area. Giant souls aren't too bad to deal with. They hit pretty hard, but... If you can keep them frozen, they die really quickly. The boss battle, on the other hand, eh, the boss battle is going to be a little interesting. I've actually died to Seldarine before soloing this area. She's definitely nothing to be underestimated. Again, kill the healers first. You don't want to have to deal with them while trying to fight Seldarine. If you can keep her frozen uh, and do enough damage to her before she transforms into that giant ass ugly version of herself, um, then it makes the fight a lot easier. Again, you have mobs that spawn and you just want to kill those relatively as fast as possible. And she'll basically just keep spawning mobs on us. And of course, take out the healer before it has a chance to heal. Finish the rest of the mobs. And let's see what we get from the chest. And we got two lesser thaumaturgic stones. Didn't pull a portal hound or anything, so that's a little bit depressing. Get rid of that ring, I've got no use for it. But this is a good way, if you need the shards for the elven battle enchantment, you can just keep running the Tower of Seldarine. Uh, Burn the Lamb commented, don't die F and H, so... Well, I went through it without dying, so I'm happy. Uh, now you can buy more keys. If you want to keep doing this, they cost 1 gold, 5,000 diamonds, and 10 gold crescents. Personally, I don't think it's worth it as the shards of the uh, Elven Battle enchantment don't sell for much. They only sell even uh, with the influx of diamonds right now for at most I get about uh, 1,000 or 999 for those shards. So they're more worth it just for refinement points than actually... Uh, to sell and get your money back. Uh, Rock1556 asked, what's good in the Seldarine chest? Uh, the only thing good in the Seldarine chest would be uh, the refinement points. Because they are unbound, you actually get the Thaumaturgic Stones, uh, which I have to find the stack of them that's unbound. There we go, the Lesser Thaumaturgic Stones. And you do have a chance to get regular Thaumaturgic Stones, the blue ones. You also have a chance to get the Portal Hound. And you have a chance to get um, the other version of the Portal Hound. So those would be the best things that you would get out of the chest. But unfortunately, they're a very low drop chance. And I've literally never pulled one. Yes, I definitely agree, Burn. They should remove the AD cost from these keys. 
Uh, the reason why they do cost AD is basically to prevent people from just continuing to run non-stop and get the uh, free refinement points and then sell the refinement points. But they should at least lower the AD cost down to only about a thousand uh, AD per key, so at least you'd make your money back. The laws of the Feywilds are not those of Feywilds. 